Welcome to Disaster Zone, where in this episode you'll be taken through the most horrific aircraft disasters oh ever caught on camera. From fatal human error to the wrath of Mother Nature, these accidents will leave you in awe and shock. Join us as we uncover what really happened in the lead up to these horrific disasters. The Air France Flight 4590 disaster was a tragic event which saw the demise of one of mankind's most impressive technological achievements. July 25th in the year 2000, the aircraft was a Concorde, a supersonic passenger jet with a takeoff speed of 250 miles per hour and a cruising speed of, wait for this, 1350 miles per hour. That's twice the speed of sound, and to put that into perspective, a Concorde trip from London to New York would take a little over three hours, as opposed to an eight hour trip for a regular subsonic airliner. Sadly, for Concorde and everyone on board Air France Flight 4590, disaster strikes just minutes after takeoff. Flight 4590 was en route from Paris to JFK International Airport in New York, a standard route with nothing out of the ordinary. However, as the Concorde barreled down the runway at breakneck speeds, it hits a piece of debris on the runway. This punctures a tire and causes it to explode. The burst tire sends debris flying into the fuel tank, causing a rupture and resulting in a massive ball of fire. Witnesses on the ground looked on in horror as the reality of what was happening stared them directly in the face. When Conkle went over, I had the window open and I was wearing a polo shirt. And I can tell you that the heat the plane was belching out melted parts of my shirt and gave me little blisters. The world's fastest passenger plane was on fire and there was nothing anyone could do. The first indications of an uncommanded roll can be seen in the flight data recorder. The fire has now been burning for a while and it's starting to melt the inboard elevon on the left hand side. It gets into, at the worst point, a roll angle of 113 degrees to the left. The aircraft, having taken on too much damage, was unable to climb high enough to stabilize, crashing into a nearby hotel. It killed all 109 people on board the plane and also four people on the ground. This tragic disaster was a significant blow to the aviation industry, as it marked the first crash of a Concorde which resulted in the grounding of the entire fleet of Concorde's aircrafts. The event also led to significant changes in aircraft safety regulations and procedures. Air France Flight 4590 was a devastating reminder of the importance of safety in aviation. Despite being the one and only ever accident for Concorde aircraft, it indelibly left its stamp in history and also on the hearts of those who lost loved ones to this tragic disaster. And from ashes and flames in this disaster, we move on to our next case. July 6th, 2013. Asiana Airlines Flight 214 was en route from Incheon, South Korea to San Francisco International Airport with 307 people on board. The Boeing 777 aircraft had flown across the Pacific Ocean and was making its final approach for landing. Little did they know, they were just seconds from disaster. As the aircraft approached the runway, onlookers stood by in terror. Look at that one. Look how his nose is up in the air. Oh my God. Oh, it's an accident. Oh my God. Flight 214 was flying too low and too slow. This caused the tail of the plane to fall lower than the landing gear, which resulted in it hitting the seawall at the end of the runway before the rest of the plane slammed onto the tarmac. The impact was so severe that the tail of the plane broke off, the fuselage skidded along the runway, and the aircraft suddenly turned into a burning inferno. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. The passengers and crew who had just survived this horrific event were now trapped inside. The sound of screams and cries for help filled the air. Passengers and crew members frantically tried to escape through the emergency exits, but the slides that were designed to deploy outside the doors did not all work, trapping many people inside the burning wreckage, so time was now of the essence. There are many terrifying stories coming from this disaster, but none more heartbreaking and preventable than that of 16-year-old Ye Meng Wan. The initial impact was so severe it flung her from the wreckage as the plane flipped and spun on the tarmac. She survived the initial impact and was discovered by first responders who arrived to help passengers. As firefighters arrived to tackle the flames, they were alerted to Wan's body, laying on the ground and told to drive around her. 
Stop, stop, stop. There's a body right There's a body right there, right, right in front of you. She was due to receive medical attention, but as firefighters coat the plane in foam, attempting to save the remaining passengers from the burning flames, they partially cover Juan's buddy too. Within 15 minutes of being told about Juan lying on the ground, fire trucks accidentally run over her body. Not once, but twice. Juan does not survive. Her parents are suing the city of San Francisco, claiming that the rescuers were reckless and poorly trained. This tragic story of loss was indeed preventable, but so was the entire crash to begin with. The pilot flying the plane at the time had very little experience with flying Boeing 777 airliners and had never landed a plane at San Francisco International Airport before. We learned overnight federal investigators sitting down with those pilots, including that pilot in training, why in that cockpit they shut down computers, the autopilot, 82 seconds before that crash landing. The investigation into the incident revealed that there were multiple factors involved in the accident, including miscommunication among the crew, pilot error, and inadequate training. In the end, three passengers lost their lives as a result of the crash, and many others sustained serious injuries. After seeing the raw footage, it's hard to believe that anyone at all made it out of there alive. The Fatal Transasia Disaster On February 4, 2015, a Transasia Airways flight GE-235 crashed into the Keelung River in Taipei, Taiwan. The plane had just taken off from Taipei Shongshan Airport and was carrying 53 passengers and 5 crew members. The cause of the accident was determined to be human error, as the pilots failed to react correctly after one of the engines malfunctioned. The incident was caught on camera by several dash cams on the ground, showing the aircraft's left wing hitting a taxi and a highway guardrail before plunging into the river. That's some incredible footage, and that taxi driver must have had a one in a million chance of surviving. But he did, and here's what he had to say about it. A plane has hit my car, he can be heard saying in this call back to base. A model plane, right? The operator replies, no, one with a pilot in it. As the plane glanced off the elevated flyover above, many people in Taiwan are wondering whether the pilot was deliberately trying to bring it down into the water to increase the chances of survival of those on board and to avoid hitting surrounding buildings. In the aftermath of the crash, rescue teams quickly deployed to the site, searching for survivors and retrieving the bodies of those who had lost their lives. It was carried out with great care and professionalism, and in the end, the crash resulted in 43 fatalities, with 15 survivors rescued from the wreckage. January 15, 2009 For a second I just thought that I was going to die right there in, in a plane. We just survived a plane crash and now we're going to drown. In the aviation industry, this date has become infamous with one name, Captain Sully, and let's explain why. This is the miraculous survival story of US Airways Flight 1549. January 15, 2009 started just like 10,000 other days, literally. The airplane was an Airbus A320, which was flying from LaGuardia Airport in New York to Charlotte Douglas International Airport in North Carolina. Everything about the flight was routine until approximately two minutes after the A320's wheels lifted off the runway. Nothing at all to indicate that this would be any different than any other takeoff in my entire career. The plane had managed to climb to just about 2,800 feet before it collided with a flock of Canadian geese, causing the engines to stall. Not just one engine, but both. The cockpit crew, consisting of Captain Chesley Sullenberger and First Officer Jeffrey Skiles, attempted to restart the engines, but to no avail. Unlike all those other flights I'd had for 42 years, this one probably would not end on a runway with the aircraft undamaged. They quickly concluded that the plane would not make it to any nearby airport without power and made the executive decision to make an emergency landing on the Hudson River, right in the heart of New York. Guys, 1529, turn right 280, you can land runway right. 1 at Teterboro. We can't do it. Okay, which runway would you like at Teterboro? We're going to be in the Hudson. Yep. I'm sorry, say again, Cactus? 210, uh, 4718. I don't know, I think he said he was going to the Hudson. It was an operation that required the skills and quick thinking of the crew members, but in particular, Captain Sully. 
Given New York's history, onlookers were both captivated and terrified at the sight of a passenger jet descending over the skyline and into the frigid waters of the Hudson River. Miraculously, the plane made a smooth landing as Captain Sully expertly put to use all his years of experience. As we hit, we hit hard, but the deceleration while a rapid was uniform. And based upon the forces that Jeff and I felt in the cockpit as we slowed to the stop, it was obvious that the airplane was intact, it was stable, it was floating, and people were probably still okay at that point. However, the danger wasn't over. The plane was sinking, and if people weren't evacuated immediately, they would either drown or quickly succumb to hypothermia. I opened the cockpit door and shouted one word, evacuate. In the end, all 155 passengers and crew members on board were rescued with only a few sustaining minor injuries. But it was an agonizing four hours until I finally received word officially that everyone was accounted for, and only then were my immediate duties completed. The event would later become known as the Miracle on the Hudson, with the entire crew, Captain Sully, and First Officer Jeffrey Skiles rightly being hailed as heroes. The US Airways Flight 1549 disaster serves as a reminder of the importance of experience, skills, and quick decisive thinking in crisis situations. In this video, you witnessed horrific aircraft disasters caught on camera, each one with its own unique story of tragedy and heroism. These events remind us that safety is paramount when it comes to air travel. So which of these airline disasters shocked you the most? Leave your thoughts in the comments, leave a like, and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, on Disaster Zone.